Next, we will consider the numerical evaluation of matrix effect. In the literature, there are several equations proposed for calculating matrix effect. In this video, we will observe three most common possibilities. As we saw previously, matrix effect influences analyte signal in the sample compared to the standard with the same concentration. Therefore, the main method for evaluating matrix effect is by, uh, by preparing two solutions. One solution that contains analyte and solvent, uh, the standard solution, and the second solution that is prepared by spiking the blank extract of the sample with the same concentration. These two solutions are analyzed and the peaks obtained for both solutions and the ratios of ratio of these signals can be used to evaluate matrix effect. If matrix components do not influence the ionization of our analyte, then the peak areas for the spiked extract and the standard solution would be identical and the matrix effect value would be 100%. However, also matrix uh, effect as ionization suppression may be present. This means that the signal obtained for the post-extraction spiked sample is significantly smaller than the one observed for the standard. Rarely but still possible is the ionization enhancement. This means that the signal obtained in the spiked extract is significantly higher than the one obtained for the standard solution. In addition to signal-based calculations, also concentration-based calculations can be performed. This means that the analyte is spiked into the blank extract of sample with a known concentration. The solution is analyzed and the analyte signal is converted to concentration by using the calibration graph. This obtained analyte concentration is compared to the concentration that the sample was actually spiked and the matrix effect value is obtained. Concentration-based and signal-based calculations give very similar results in general. The third method uses calibration graph slopes. In this case, two calibration graphs are prepared, one in solvent and the other in the extract of the sample, the so-called matrix-matched calibration graph. For both graphs, slopes are calculated and compared and matrix effect is obtained. This met method is very useful because it allows to evaluate matrix effect on a wide concentration range. However, it assumes that matrix effect is independent of analyte concentration and all our measurements need to be carried out in the linear range. This method is also very useful because it allows to evaluate matrix effect also for samples for which blank extracts may not be present. Uh, in this case, extract that contains small amount of analyte is spiked with um, analyte and the matrix match calibration graph obtained. And as long as we stay within the linear range, the slope is not influenced by the small amount of analyte originally present in the extract. If we have evaluated matrix effect, we may also combine it with the other common source of uh, bias in LCMS analysis, the recovery. And by comparing, combining matrix effect and recovery, we obtain process efficiency, which is the most common term for trueness in, uh, in case of LCMS analysis. Now, this was the theory in a nutshell, and we will see, the, see this topic further in the lab. Thank <laughs> you.